couple of months ago, I thought about building my own flying machine with just a 3D printer and a few basic tools. I already have some paragliding experience, so I only had to figure out how much power I need to get me into the sky. As a reference, I took the power of an entry-level paramotor, an Atom 80, that has around 15 horsepower or 50 kilograms of static thrust. While researching, I came across these drone motors that seemed to match the numbers when powered accordingly. After I had decided on the electric components, I started designing the basic structure. A mix of aluminium bars and 3D printed components that join everything together. To ensure I don't get any lines into the propellers, I added a 3D printed duct around each propeller. To save some weight, I played around with infill and thickness settings and ended up making it almost hollow with just some enforcements along the edges, giving me overall a quite stiff structure while keeping the weight small. I also experimented with lightweight filaments like Ace Aero from Bamboo Lab due to its low weight. It requires parts to be designed in a certain way to basically print them without retraction, which is quite a hard design limitation. Otherwise you will just end up with extremely poor results. So in the end I used ABS glass fiber, since it has good stiffness properties and with some setting tweaks I got some decent weights as well. Duck parts were printed as 10 individual parts and joined by sliding them together and locking them with a few printed bolts. Since the structure alone didn't have the necessary stiffness, I had to give it some more strength with a layer of fiberglass. Next it was time to get the powertrain going, so I designed a simple throttle with a potentiometer and e 32 c 3 microcontroller. The microcontroller is connected to a CAN bus that connects both ESC or motor controllers. The motor controllers give feedback about the RPM or rotation speed of each motor. In case the motors wouldn't produce the same power, both motors would be shut down automatically. To monitor everything, I wrote a little app that connects via Bluetooth to the microcontroller, sending all the important information to the app so I can check the battery state of charge and also monitor RPM and power consumption. So let's print and put everything together. <laughs> that little guy, it was time to juice things up and give the motors the power they need to get me airborne. I got that hefty 24S battery second hand and decided to cut the voltage in half, literally cutting the entire battery in half, soldering the terminal and balance wires on. Ending up with two small 12S 11P batteries. In the first test I just tried to get a feeling for the power. Next I did some hang testing to make sure the motors were pushing me evenly. For 
last test, I made a simulation to shut off one motor after 10 seconds to see what the consequence could be in case I'm on full throttle and have one motor failing. <laughs> It was time to take my first steps outside, so I started practicing different techniques to get the glider up. Since the motors are mounted on the side, I could not get the glider up in a classic forward launch since they would get caught by the prop ducts. So I laid the lines over my shoulders, which didn't work too bad. So after all of that, the only thing that was left was finding a day that didn't have the worst weather, which was honestly challenging. But eventually a suitable day came up, so I grabbed all my stuff and went to a large field. Unfortunately the wind was quite low, meaning I would need a lot of speed and it didn't make it ideal for a reverse launch, meaning facing the glider when getting it into the air. But it went surprisingly well. Unfortunately I quickly realized that full power was barely enough to get me off the ground. So I didn't want to make bigger steering input, not to lose any height, but that was my mistake, as I eventually went too much into crosswind and ultimately lost control and crashed. Luckily, there is only a minor damage on the prop and the duct can be fixed by easily reprinting a few pieces. If you want to follow my journey into the sky, I am happy about any new subscriber. I will post updates on repair and of course of my next flying attempt. Until then, thanks for watching, bye.